Welcome to week seven workout problem. I'm gonna work through the assignments for chapters 10, 11, and 12. So this is a big chunk of uh, work. So definitely uh, follow through. If you, if you haven't attempted some of the chapters, go ahead and go in and read the problems and work them out yourself. The main goal of the these uh, workout problem videos is to help you fix any uh, problems that you may have, right? So I want you to learn how to do some of these problems and, and work through some of the concepts we've discussed in the lecture video and that you've read about. And then ideally you, you'll have that knowledge in your head uh, from working it out and, and then from watching the videos and fixing problems for the exams. So you'll be able to perform well on the exam. So, so you may see a couple of these problems on the final exam. And so as you do, hopefully you're, you're um, instead of copying what I do here, you're, you're learning as you go, right? So anyways, let's jump right in. So we're going to do uh, chapter 10, problem 1. So chapter 10, problem 1. So chapter 10 is where we're talking about uh, purely competitive firms and we're talking about them in the short run. So that's going to help us kind of with chapter 10 to kind of focus in on what we're going to learn here. So here we have a purely competitive firm and we see that the price of the product is $20. So we know that the price of the product equals the marginal revenue, right? Equals the average revenue, right? So that's what we learn in the short run, right? For these, for the purely competitive markets, they're price takers, right? Uh, for in the purely competitive market. So it has a cost, a fixed cost of $100 and a variable cost of $10 per unit for the first 50. And then it goes up and is $25 per unit for all successive units from 51 units above. Right, and so this can happen in a market, especially if you can do 50 units without hiring someone, someone new or maybe getting that bigger machine or whatever the case is for variable cost. Um, but then once you maybe increase your production, you've got to maybe invest a little more and have a little more uh, variable cost included in that mix of, of cost. So, uh, so the question is, does price exceed average variable cost for the first 50 units? So let's ask ourselves, what is the average variable cost for the first 50 units? Uh, so we see here it says a variable cost of $10 per unit for the first 50. So that right there is our average variable cost. So $10, and then we're gonna say, does price exceed that? Well, our price is 20. So the answer is no, it does not exceed it, okay? So what about for the first 100 units? Okay, so we know that for the first 10 units, we have uh, our um, average variable cost of $10. So we can say, here's our $10 per unit times 50. So that's gonna be our total variable cost for the first 50 units. So that's gonna be $500, right? And then we know going beyond 50 units, 51, right through 100 so there's another 50 units so that's going to be uh that's going to be 50 times it's going to be 25 is what it's going to be okay okay so for that and then we're going to be able to say for those units uh we're going to add that uh cost then together okay so we're gonna add the cost of those two together and divide by 100, okay? So the, so the total cost added together, it's actually gonna be uh, 17,050 is what it's gonna be, divided by 100. And so our average variable cost is actually going to be uh, $17 and 50 cents for that uh, for, for that and so it's going to be 
uh, $17. So our average variable cost for the first 100 units is $17.50. So does, does average variable cost exceed um, the price? Or does the price exceed average variable cost? So I need to switch that, don't I, for number one. So instead of no, the price does exceed, right? Okay, so it's gonna be yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I gotta go back and look. I'm reading the reading the questions wrong here. So is the price gonna exceed our 17.50? And the, and the answer again is yes for that. So both of those are yes, yes and yes, okay? So now our next, our next question here is what is the marginal cost per unit for the first 50 units? Okay, so if we add an additional unit, how much more cost do we have? And, and that's pretty simple, that's gonna be, uh, that's $10, okay? The variable cost in the case of uh, this scenario is gonna be, uh, our variable cost is our marginal cost, okay? So what about for units 51 and higher? And that one is pretty easy as well, right? So that one, the, the marginal cost for that is gonna be uh, $25, right? Okay. So then, then we have for each of the first 50 units, does marginal revenue exceed marginal cost? Okay, so our marginal cost we've found out was $10, right? So here's marginal cost is $10, right? And marginal revenue is 20, which is our price, right? So for every additional one we sell, we get an additional 20. So does marginal revenue exceed marginal cost? And the answer is yes, it does. So what about for units 51 and higher? So marginal revenue in that case is still 20, right? And are, does marginal revenue exceed the marginal cost? And the marginal cost in the 51 and above is $25. And so that is a, that is a no, right? That actually is not true. So 20 is not greater than 25, so that's a no. And then finally, the very last question, right? So what output level will yield the largest possible profit for this purely competitive firm, okay? So, so we've gotta go back to our rules, our three questions, right? What output level? So how much should we produce? What's, what should our output level be? And so the ultimate pro, uh, level of output is where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, right? Without cost exceeding rep margin, without marginal cost exceeding marginal revenue, right? We still have to have enough revenue to cover our cost. So in this case, since we have this stair step, right? So we have, we have $10 and then boom, we jump right up to 25, right? $10 for the first, for the first 50, one through 50, right? And then it jumps right up to $25 for 51 and above, we're gonna wanna produce right at this level, right at 50, right before it jumps up there because our marginal revenue can't cover the 51st marginal cost, right? Of the 51st unit. So the, so the answer is that of that is gonna be 50, will be the, the prime level of output. Okay, so now we're, now we're going on to problem four. So that was problem one of chapter 10. Okay, so now we're going on to problem four and we are still have a purely competitive producer. Okay, and we're, we're looking at the short run here is what we're looking at. So, so we're assuming the following cost data are for a pure, purely competitive producer. So that's, that's pretty uh, straightforward. Um, at a product price of 56, so here our price equals 56, right? At that price, will this firm produce in the short run? So that's our first question, will it produce? And what we need to look at is we need to look at average variable cost. So the minimum average variable cost, okay? And we have to say, is our price above the minimum average variable cost? And if it is, 
then yes, we will produce. So let's find our minimum average variable cost. Right here, right? $37 is minimum. Is 56 uh, above the, our $37 average variable cost? And the answer is yes. Will it produce in the short run? And the answer is yes, it will. Okay, so then we go on, go on from here. If it is preferable to produce, which it is, uh, what will be the profit maximizing or loss minimizing output? Because we could have a loss or we could have a profit. So what, what, what's our maximizing point? With our price being 56, what we're looking at in price equals, right, marginal revenue. So we're looking at the pro point where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. And where is that? Marginal revenue is fifty-six dollars, so we want the the closest to fifty-six without going over for our marginal cost. So here's our marginal cost here, right? So we're going down, and sure enough, there we are, right there. Fifty-five is the closest without going over. Okay, so fifty-five is where we're going from seven to eight, right? So the, the marginal cost of going from seven to eight is 55, so that leaves us at eight. We're at eight at 55, and so that is our, a preferable level of production is eight, okay? So eight units, right? Okay, so now the next question, what economic profit or loss will the firm realize per unit of output at that level. So we have eight units of output. And so, so our equation goes like this, okay? So it's gonna be our marginal revenue, which is our price, minus our average total cost, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and multiply that by our uh, output level, okay? So this is, this is how the numbers stack up. So here's our 56, that's our marginal revenue, minus average total cost. In this case, it is $48.13. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and multiply that by our output level, which is eight. Okay, and that gives us a profit of, let's see, where's, Where's my profit going to be at here? That gives us a profit of $62.96. And you can calculate that out and just make sure I'm correct on that one. Uh, but that's how you work it out, right? That's going to be our profit. Okay, so now, we, now we've got two other prices here. We've got $41 and $32, okay? So, and then we have to ask ourselves the same questions. Will the company produce? If so, how much? And what will be our profit? So here's our, our marginal revenue is 41. Again, our average variable cost, minimum average variable cost is 37. So will we produce? Yes, we will produce. How much are we gonna produce? Well, let's go down marginal cost, right? This is how much. So we're gonna meet up 41, okay? So the curve slopes down, and as it's coming back up, it's gonna hit right at 40. We don't wanna go over, go on to the next unit, or else we're gonna be over. So that's gonna be from five to six. So we're gonna end right up at six here. So that's gonna be our six units. And then what is gonna be our profit at that level? So we've got our $41 price minus $47.50. Uh oh, this doesn't look good. That's the average total cost is greater than, than our price, our average revenue. And then we're gonna go ahead and multiply that by six. So that actually is going to be a loss. So we're minimizing loss in this case and our loss is going to be negative $39, okay? So that's gonna be our loss for that. And then we go on to 32. So 32 is our next one. And uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna see 
for ask our first question here of uh, are we going to produce right so here's 32 that's our it's our marginal revenue look over here at average variable cost minimum is 37 right here we're below right our price is below minimum average variable costs so the answer is no we are not going to produce and we don't have to answer the rest of the questions because we don't have a, a output level or a profit or loss because we're not even producing in the short run at that at, at that price all right so we're going to go ahead and uh, fill in this form. So I went ahead and did it for us. So it says, uh, this is part D of, of problem four. It says, in the table below, complete the short run supply schedule for the firm and indicate the profit or loss incurred at each output. Okay, so, so we know that if we produce below this level right here, it's actually below 37, we aren't gonna produce. So we're not producing at all, but we do have a loss of 60 why is that see that's actually that actually is going to be our fixed cost right right so we're gonna lose that no matter if we produce or not right um, if, if we do loss minimization then that is the, so this right here is shut down right shut down okay these two, these three, I should say right here is loss minimization right here. Okay, so if we calculate and go through our profit calculations, that loss and minimization. This one we already did, right? That's part of our, our problem before. And then we go into here, this is profit with an F maximization so this is at these levels of uh, output this is going to be our profit right and so um, we already calculated this one right so we already did this one then you all you have to do is calculate the 66 uh, price is 66 dollars okay so now the next pro part of problem four is we're going to fill in uh, the next uh, column so we're gonna say, we're gonna now assume that there are 1,500 identical firms in this competitive industry. So, um, so the, we're gonna, each of these has the same cost da data as, as the firm that we looked at before, because they're, they're all, it's a com purely competitive industry, so they're all gonna be identical. Um, none of them have an advantage per se of the, over the other one. What we're supposed to do now is we're supposed to complete uh, column four, which is the industry supply schedule. So that's going to be uh, this column right here, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do it in green. So the first two, this is shut down, right? So everybody's going to shut down. So production is zero. Okay. So uh, at this level, the quantity supplied basically is the quantity of a single firm multiplied by our 1500 right so that's what we're doing all the way down through here so we're going to do that and we're going to get our answer here for for these uh the for the industry right the industry supply curve okay and so now now we have the question now that we've created the industry supply curve we have this uh demand curve as well the total demand curve for the different prices and so now we're going to answer some questions here so it says what will be the equilibrium price so we've got to look here and we've got to say where is price and quantity equal between demand and supply and it's actually going to be so let's flip back and forth here it's actually going to be right here so take a look at 46 here's our supply 10,500 Here's our demand, 46, 10,500. So that is gonna be our equilibrium price is 46. What will be the equilibrium output for the industry? Same, it's 10,500, right? That's what it's gonna be. Then for each firm, what is it gonna be? We're gonna flip back this way, 10,500. For each firm, it will be seven, 
right? It will be seven. What will uh, what will profit or loss be per unit per firm? Well, let's go back here. Seven profit or loss right here, right? We're going to divide that by uh, our two. Our the, the loss per firm is going to be uh, per unit is going to be uh, that. 798 divided by 7, which is actually going to be a dollar. What is it going to be? A dollar 14, right? So, uh, will this in, uh, uh, and so that's per unit, and then the per firm is, is the seven dollars 98, right? So, you got to have both of those. And then the last question is, is will this industry expand or contract in the long run? and it will contract right so we have a loss so this is a loss situation that we're that we're talking about loss minimization every firm's losing 798 so it's going to be a loss situation so firms in the long run are going to get out in the long run it's going to contract firms are going to get out of there Okay, so now we're on to chapter 11. This is kind of turning into a little longer than I had hoped. So um, I, I'm actually going to pause here, and then we're going to start chapter 11 in a different video um, just to split up the size of the videos.